How to manage hospital or medical care whilst travelling with kids. Hi, I'm Lauren Selby. And I'm Jamie Selby. And we've got three beautiful kids, Jackson, Alara and Tobias. And we're currently travelling the world. We're trying to show you how to live the ultimate life by living life the way that you want to. So, picture this. We've got this castle bed. It's beautiful castle bed, white and grey tiles. Uh, double bunks, so we've got one for Jackson was born at the time. No, I was a bit over ambitious as a dad. Uh, I wanted to give my son the best bed in the world, so he made this bed. And Dave and I were just playing, I, weren't we? We were yeah, just, just playing, playing Lego, yeah. and then he started like, and I thought he was getting frustrated because it wasn't going right. He was yeah. only two years old, and then I realised that he wasn't breathing very good. So I shouted Jay and. Yeah. Then you started to panic. Yeah, I look panic a little <laughs> bit. Uh, don't know whether any of you are also panickers, but I, I, you know, when it comes to your, your child, and this is our first child, we don't know what's going off. And I phoned 111 because I don't know what to do. 111 is a service in the UK that basically is links to the NHS. Link, it? Links to, is the, part of the NHS service. So basically, we call this number, speak to the attendant, I tell them what's happening, and they're like, right, an ambulance will be there in like five ten minutes I'm like what what do you mean an ambulance like it, it can't be that yeah, bad we were talking about his breaths and how shallow yeah. they were and they were asking is he sucking in from his ribs and we were like yeah his whole tummy's going in um so they just said they'd send an ambulance so obviously we start mm. to panic a little bit and then we hear stuff going off outside Jamie's open, open the door waiting downstairs I'm keeping Toby focused on his lego trying not to panic myself doing my deep breathing it, it wasn't just you know the ambulance being there in five, 10 minutes, we had like three sets of people, didn't we? Who came in the end and the, the, you were stood there in the yeah, doorway no, I was, waiting. I was stood there in the doorway waiting. Obviously at this point we didn't know um, that they'd called it as an emergency. So this woman comes um, bounding towards the door, like out Not of an breath. ambulance, she was in. She came through the door um, I was like, whoa, like, because she was like, where's, where's the baby? Where, it's, uh, I've heard it's a cardiac arrest, like, where is it? And I'm like, uh, uh, upstairs, he's upstairs. And like, she runs upstairs and I'm following her and I'm like, what the hell's going off here? And then another person arrives and, and, and then, she's yeah. pulling out all these things and sticking them yeah, on Toby and we're like, do, 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 she's uh, like, wait, he's, he's okay? Like, he's, yeah. he's not having a cardiac arrest. They put it through wrong, yeah, bless through them. Wrong cardiac arrest. So. Um, so you can imagine the panic around everybody. So then another, it was a first responder, an ambulance and a car, and then an ambulance ambulance that all turned up to kind of come and see yeah. this cardiac arrest baby when it was Tobias having breathing difficulties. Yeah. But fortunately for us, <clears> the three that were there, put him on a nebulizer and sorted it out and talked to us about, you know, what could have caused it, are there any allergies or, or whatever. But we got great care and fortunately we didn't have to go into hospital this time. Now we have been in hospital in the UK with kids quite a few times. We've got yeah, three kids. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the NHS is great and it's free, completely free service in the UK. Now we had worries and fears around when we sold everything to go in search of the ultimate life and go on our travel adventure, what were we gonna do for healthcare, healthcare yeah. or medical care? And now we'd had an experience of Tobias having this exact same condition in another couple of countries before the other two kids come along. So fortunately for us, we had a little bit of experience in the fact that we had an E111 mm -hmm. card and we went into a hospital. We didn't call 11, we took him into a hospital so A&E and things like that in another country and everything was okay. Yeah, if you've got any questions about the E111 and the GHIC cards, um, put them in the comments below. Put them in the comments below. below. But effectively, it's an insurance card with the, um, within the European Union. So if you need healthcare within the European Union, basically all we need, all we wanted, was we wanted the feeling of uh, safety. So when we go abroad, if we need to access healthcare, which seemed to be quite often with three kids, <laughs> um, because you know it seemed like Jackson was always bumping his head, Lara was having breathing problems, Toby was having breathing problems, it seemed like it was having problems with all of them. Yeah, we were just basically, we were just scared and not only had, you know, we've been to a couple of different countries on holiday, not as a travel adventure, but just as holiday. We had holiday insurance and we had like medical cover under that. Yeah. And we also had the E111 card and we had an experience with Tobias being in hospital with the same breathing mm. difficulties as we had in the UK. So we kind of knew what to do. We, we told them 
that they needed scary, in Nebula though, either. It? Yeah, and it was still, very scary. Yeah, still scary different it, country, different language, you're not quite sure what to do, but we handled that situation. Yeah, I know. But the like one of the things that a lot of our friends were saying was basically, you know, what are you gonna do for medical care? Naively, naively, we thought our travel insurance would be enough because like Lauren said, we had that experience before and it was handled really well by the insurance company. We kind of assumed that it'd be like that for the next thing and actually it was. It was yeah. We took Alara <laughs> and Toby and Jackson to Sweden when we first sold the house. We put the house on the market, went over to Sweden and Alara got all this green stuff coming out of here and we needed a fit to fly letter because mm. we knew we'd get stopped on the flight if we hadn't. Well, so, it wasn't just that, it was with anything to do with the ears, we were worried that if we took Alara up, um, we'd read on Google, good old Google, Dr. Google, and Google had said, um, if they have an ear infection, um, don't, fly. don't fly, because could it could perfect. perforate the eardrum. And we were just thinking, well, if we've got to fly for two hours, put Alara in pain, and I don't know about you, but as a parent, I don't want to put my child <laughs> in pain, ever. <clears throat> so we didn't want that to happen. So we, we called the insurance company up. Insurance yeah, company, know. yeah. It was on the day that we were flying home as well. So it was a case of, you know, we needed to quickly ring the insurance, get to a hospital, get seen and get to the airport to get on the flight. And, you know, fortunately everything went right. Her ear was already perforated, which meant she could fly. Yeah. Um, we got some medication. We filled out all the forms. We paid the money up front. And then we claimed the money back when we got back. So win-win. Not all insurance companies are equal. and. Whilst we had a good experience in the sense of we got going the through, back. <laughs> getting the money back, it took how long? It took a, m a month or two, didn't no, it? Well, I think it was three months. I think it was three months in total we had to wait to get the money back. There are better insurance companies out there. We haven't found one yet, but the actual travel insurance that you get, you need to look at the small again, print. Look at the small print. I don't want to go into too much details here and techno babble you. Well, ask um, any questions you've got yeah. around that. You know, we can drop it below. We can tell you which insurance companies we used and whatnot. But, but it's something to be conscious of. Be very conscious about this because as... It's scary. It is very scary. And what happened was, obviously, we'd been out to, with Toby on holiday. And he was ill. We covered it on the insurance. I actually ended up staying out there in Crete at one point and Jamie coming back and then me coming back and it was all covered. We got the money back. Same in Sweden, when we did it in Sweden. We got the problem sorted in the hospitals, we paid up front, we got the money back. Now, well, whilst, whilst you're ever in the European Union, your GHIC card, um, which is your global health insurance card, it replaces the E111, um, you're, you're basically covered by the UK to use doctors because I've had minor hiccups and I've been to hospital quite a bit, to yeah. be fair, and I've been to hospital in Spain, I've been to hospital in quite a few countries, um, but we haven't, the only country we actually had to pay in was Bulgaria, um, and they made me pay just to go to the front of the line. I didn't, I didn't realise that was what they were doing, but essentially I paid £30 and they saw me straight away. I didn't have to wait, I didn't have to do anything. I went straight in, ECGs, injected me with something, I don't even know what it was. <laughs> I still don't know what it was. Maybe it was just water, placebo effect, but um, point is that the vehicles of protection that we were looking for was with our insurance and we began to realise that actually the insurance probably wasn't right for us. So, so what we found on our experience of our travel adventures is that whilst the insurance companies covered us to go on holiday and our kids being ill and the medical care we received was fantastic despite the language barrier they were amazing yeah, they were in amazing. every hospital we've been to and we've probably been into like I'd say maybe nearly 30 hospitals in different countries now three kids and a crazy husband and that's all of us we all of us have had an experience in a hospital or, or five or of a us. doctors yeah or a doctor's appointment or something so what we didn't know and the villain in the story is actually the insurance companies don't cover you i've paid 12 months travel insurance with all the extras and paid the top whack to make sure we're covered for everything and ha added on every add-on to make sure we're covered for everything. What they haven't told us is that they're covered for 90 days at a time or some That's of them it, yeah. 45 days at yes. a time. So we are now officially not insured. <laughs> 
for our worldwide travel insurance. 12 month worldwide travel insurance that covers everything. We're not insured. So Because we're over the time limit of leaving the UK. We're going after this the ultimate, what we're calling the ultimate life for us. You know, we're travelling all over all over Europe. We had to leave Europe with the Schengen. The Schengen days. We'll talk about the Schengen we'll days. We'll do, you know, yeah. how how to manage the Schengen visas and things like that later. But Brexit. <laughs> but basically, we left the house in July. We went down from Nottingham to the south coast. We went into three hospitals down there. Uh, we had Jackson in Hall Hospital and in Southampton Hospital. You in Bournemouth, no, Jackson in Bournemouth, you in Southampton. It had been a bit crazy. So we managed three hospitals on the first part of our travel adventure. That's before all we in the UK. Went into Europe, yeah. Then we ended up in. I banged my head in France, so I had to see somebody in France, then in Spain, then you were ill in Spain, then in Portugal, Alara was ill, and we had to go into the hospital in there, and then we had to go to two hospitals in Portugal, because she got transferred from one hospital to another that so was pediatric. So basically, we are just the hypochondriac parents. <laughs> so we, if you've got any questions about hospitals abroad, ask us, because we've been to plenty. But what I'm saying but is we've been to plenty, not... we have how our money's worth, but make sure you're covered. So we were trying to, um, we didn't actually discover that we weren't insured by our travel insurance. Um, I had a sneaky suspicion that we weren't covered by the travel insurance. And because we'd been in so, <laughs> so many, many so many hospitals in so many different countries, I wanted to make sure before we left, limit. before we left the European Union, that we were covered. So I started reading this uh, travel blog um, from other van lifers that we started to realise actually the insurance that we had, the travel insurance that we had didn't cover us because we'd had our bikes stolen. So we had travel insurance which covered us for medical, medical and, and personal, belongings, personal belongings, gadgets, whatever else. And I found out that actually our personal belongings were not covered. Well basically we haven't had any money back from our bikes being stolen five months ago. The hospitals are amazing. Yeah, if you're from amazing. the UK and you like the NHS and you know that side of it, you are not going to get any less quality in another country. We have well, been yeah in the country in Europe definitely, in Turkey definitely, uh, Bulgaria a little bit suspect. Uh, Romania was pretty good. Slovenia looked amazing, but we can't say every country because we've not been to every country. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the medical care we've received in every country we've, we've been, been in a to. hospital yes. has been very good. Um, Sorry. <laughs> we have had a very good experience. They've listened to us. Even when I was really scared mm. in Spain, like I had crushing pain and it turned out I just pulled the muscle here. But, you know, Jamie was panicking, heart attack and went to get checked out. And I couldn't understand what she was saying because she was speaking so fast and my Spanish is okay but not that okay and I was scared so I couldn't speak Spanish it won't come out because I was so scared so I was showing the pictures but even when I was in that terrified reptile state the, the, stuff, the care we received was still really good so yes. even my dad's been he had a heart attack in Belgium and they sorted it straight away yes it costs some money but your life's worth money right and you can always claim it back so make sure if you can claim it back. <laughs> yeah, and we, we've had uh, other friends that we've met along the journey that have that have had uh, needed medical care, and they've said exactly the same things as us. Or well, pay privately. Look how yeah. much it is to pay privately. In Turkey, we paid for what we needed privately because we knew we're out of our insurance <laughs> timeline. We paid privately, and actually, it wasn't that expensive. It felt expensive because we don't pay in the UK. So just to reiterate again and again, what you must do, and you must do this to alleviate your fears when traveling abroad, when traveling with kids, is just check the small print on your insurance. We're gonna leave the links to a couple of insurance companies down below that you should check out. We can't leave any recommendations for legal reasons on insurance companies um, because we have to get approval from the insurance companies first. Um, we're not registered insurance broker, so we can't give that advice. But what I am giving you advice on is just check the small print. It sounds ridiculous, it's boring as hell, but if you're gonna go and do what we're doing and go traveling abroad, traveling in a van, you know, just make sure your insurance covers you. And that's that's the same for the van insurance. That's for another video though. But the key take home message here is, 
if you feel scared of traveling abroad with kids because of medical or hospital reasons, you want to know how to manage that, you can always ask us, drop in the messages below, that's fine. Because we have had great experiences with hospitals in Portugal, Spain, Turkey. We've been to so many now. And Bulgaria. Bulgaria. <laughs> like we, I, lo I lost track. Yeah. Sweden, you know, Rhodes, Greece, whatever. We've been to so many Creep. hospitals <laughs> and we've not had one bad experience. So if you are fearful of having a bad experience, don't, you know, mm. be more intrigued to find out what could go right on your holiday, not what can go wrong. Because Amen. that's what it's about. If you're traveling for one week or two weeks or the rest of your life, like we're following the ultimate life, we don't know how long we're gonna be on this journey, but what we can do is inspire you to say, it's gonna be okay. We're still here, we've had a great experience, but please check your insurance. Yes. Join us on our adventure. As we inspire you to live your ultimate life. Please like and subscribe. Ha <laughs> ha